I am actually like really excited for the state that Wayland's in and the state that Wayland's going to be in like maybe six months to a year. I haven't talked about this much on this channel, but if you've been watching my main channel, you may have heard me talk about like the new VSync protocol so you can finally use Wayland and disable VSync. Now, some people are like, oh, but why would you want to disable VSync? That means you're going to get screen tearing. Good. I want screen tearing. I want less input lag. That's the problem that, that Wayland sort of always had. It's great as a general desktop experience. Hey, you can, you know, watch videos, you can write documents, scroll through things, and no screen tearing whatsoever. I think that's a really admirable goal. Admirable goal. And as a general computing experience, I think VSync is better. Some people don't like VSync just on the desktop, you know, they feel like the input lag, you know, is kind of iffy. I don't mind. It's fine when it's like that. But for gaming, I want to have the option to have VSync on or not. Some games play nicely with VSync, some don't. If I'm playing a turn-based game, for example, I don't really care about the VSync. Like, if I'm playing um, FF10, for example, or I'm emulating Pokemon, I don't really care about VSync. It doesn't matter. It might, you know, make things feel a little bit it's kind of sloppy, like the, the UI might feel a little bit off, but it's not enough where it really matters. Unless you're playing a game like Kingdom Hearts 2, where if you don't know, that game has like a frame perfect UI. You can do crazy shit in that game because they made the UI the most optimized. Just go look at some of the like high level PS, uh, the high level um, Kingdom Hearts 2 stuff. The UI is so insanely optimized. You get through everything in, like, an absolute instance, making the Taz stuff just ridiculous. Like, you can install, an, or you can equip, like, an entire set of gear and, like, change out everything in, like, 10 frames. Like, that's how stupid Kingdom Hearts 2 is. But besides weird games like that, your general gaming experience, like, slower stuff, V-Sync, fine. Quick stuff like that, or like, you know, you're playing Dark Souls, you're playing DMC5, anything like that, you want the option to disable VSync. Now, some people do still prefer having VSync. They don't really care about the extra input lag. The, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the less teary experience is something that they do prefer. But I'm not in that camp. I am in the camp of give me the option. I want to have better input lag and be good to go. So there's that protocol, which... It took a while to come in, basically because a lot of the Wayland devs aren't gamers and have no idea what gamers actually want from their system. They're like, why would anybody want vision? What? Why would anybody want tearing? Wayland's supposed to be frame perfect. And I've heard dumb arguments like this breaks the whole concept of Wayland. It's just like if the whole if the whole selling point of Wayland is to make the user's experience worse. You are certainly doing that for a very long time, but thankfully they've decided to like you know, address that and bring that protocol through. Now, at this point, it's up to the, um, <clears throat> up to the compositors, up to the desktops to actually go and implement it. So it's going to take, like, maybe six months to a year for that to be properly propagated out. Now, obviously, the better, the better experience, like, all around is VSync with variable refresh rate. But even though VR has gotten a lot cheaper... And, you know, a lot of people are going to be able to afford those devices now. People don't want to buy a new display just to fix a software problem. Like, they expect the software to do what the software's supposed to do, and then go from there. Uh, there's been, a, I think it was a couple of months back at this point. If I look at it, I guarantee that if I look it up, I'm going to find my video on it. Uh, Wayland Global Shortcuts. Will I find my, yep, my video is the top video. Of course it is. This is on Google because, I don't know, I wanted to find it quickly. Um, <laughs> I do love the fact that for a lot of these, a lot of these topics, like my video is now just the top video. It's very strange. Oh, you can't even see it. What the fuck? Why is it on the wrong desk, on the wrong thing? Get over here. Uh, that one. There we go. Do we even have that window open? Oh, <laughs> I know what happened. I know what happened. I, I'm stupid. That was the correct window. I'd actually opened up a new window that I didn't need. Anyway, let me just go back to that one. Uh, global shortcuts. Here we go. 
Top video. Anyway, that wasn't the point I was getting at. The point I was getting at was that the idea of global shortcuts are finally being dealt with as well. Not directly in the Wayland protocol, but with a user space extension, a user space application to run that works around the protocol. And then there's also the thing that just happened today with um, fractional scaling. I guess it'd be last week for you guys, but the fractional scaling protocol also just got merged. So all of these major changes are happening towards the end of this year. Now, it's going to, as I said, it's going to take time for these things to propagate out to the users, and especially this one, because the vSync one, you just have to rely on the compositors, but the scale, the scaling one is going to depend on not only the compositors, but also the toolkits, and then it depends on you using the latest toolkit. Like, if you're using, if you've got an application built in Qt4, for example, still, it's not going to support it. But if you've got like probably Qt5 and definitely Qt6 are going to have this. And I think Qt6 actually, maybe Qt5 already as well. I think they both already had support for fractional scaling for use over on the Xorg side. 